Good afternoon, ladies, gentlemen, and graduates. Welcome to your graduation. This is an important day in the life of the university, a day to celebrate the success of our graduates. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you to this ceremony and to formally declare the congregation of the university open. Please be seated. Deputy Vice-Chancellor, distinguished guests, ladies, gentlemen, and graduates, what a great privilege it is to welcome you all to our wonderful city for this wonderful event. And what a great privilege it is to welcome you all in person. It feels so good to say that, and even better to see you all here. You don't need me to tell you what a difficult time it has been since March 2020. We've all experienced it, and for some of us, it's been more difficult than for others. Today, though, is a well-earned celebration for us all, but particularly for our graduates. Today, you leave us having achieved what you set out to achieve when you arrived at the university three, or in some cases, more years ago. Because of the social distancing restrictions that remain in place, we cannot offer the full celebrations as we ordinarily would. It's a great disappointment that the post-ceremony drinks reception cannot run this year. We're going to miss this opportunity to catch up with you and to hear your plans for the future, but we hope you'll let us know about those plans in other ways. And although you'll miss the opportunity to drink tepid wine at the postgraduate reception, we know you'll have your celebrations planned, and we've added a bottle of something sparkling, alcoholic or non-alcoholic as you choose, to your gift bags, something to take away and to drink at your leisure. Despite all the challenges of the past 18 months, and perhaps because of them, it really is an immense pleasure to be able to personally and on behalf of the staff at the university, congratulate you, our graduates, on your well-earned achievement. I am immensely proud of your commitment to your studies during such disrupted times and your broader development as worthy citizens. And I hope you are so proud of yourselves as well. We always talk at graduation about the many achievements of our students academically, both at home and through study abroad, in the sporting arena, through the paid work that they undertake, and through volunteering. We know that you all do so many things that bring credit to yourselves, to your families, and to the university. However, this year, we add to those achievements the way in which you've coped with your day-to-day -day lives, lives that have changed so quickly and in so very many ways. These are changes that have required steep learning curves, new ways of working, changes that have separated us all from family and friends, and that have led also to loss and sadness. I and my colleagues are very proud of how you've dealt with these challenges. We're mindful of the sacrifices that you have made, and we know that the vast majority of you who are young people have made sacrifices only to help others. I think it's worth marking the extent and scale of young people's selfless behavior throughout the, the pandemic. This marks them out as worthy of particular respect. It's also easy to think, well, we would do the same, and I hope we would. But those who say this are nearly always older, have more life experience, and see greater self-interest in staying at home and following the rules. I am amazed and proud at how you have coped and, as your academic achievements show, how you've flourished. This country is lucky to have you. Of course, you, our students, are also lucky. You've coped admirably well, but mostly not alone. You've had your support networks, parents, partners, children, wider family and friends, all have helped by providing encouragement, a shoulder to cry on, a listening ear. 
I suspect that in many cases, you'll have seen far more of each other than you expected, maybe sometimes more of each other than you desired. But your supporters have had faith in you. They've kept faith in you and willed you to succeed. And now you have succeeded, I think it's appropriate that you, our graduates, should stand up and with a warm round of applause, join me in thanking your family and friends who are here today. So if you could stand, graduates, and we want a big cheer and clap for your family and friends. Now, I'd like you to stay standing, because you've also received the support of our colleagues, your lecturers and tutors, of course, who you will have seen probably most often, but the many technicians, counselors, course developers, librarians, and other colleagues who often behind the scenes have worked to make sure that your studies and the wider environment of the university are supported. Can we also take a moment to acknowledge their hard work and dedication? Thank you so much, and please sit down. If there was one word to describe the world in the last few years, it would be uncertainty. The lives of many of today's graduates have been shaped by financial crisis, by political austerity, and all the uncertainty and division around Brexit and now the pandemic. It can be easy to be pessimistic, but I'm not. And I want to tell you, our graduates, that you should not be either. When I look at you, I see passionate, highly skilled, and highly educated people. People full of ideas and ready and prepared to reshape our world. Seeing you all today is a tremendous feeling and a welcome reminder that whatever our current difficulties, our future is in good hands. You should also feel confident that you're graduating from a university that is recognized as part of the modern global elite of universities, tackling the real challenges of the 21st century. We have the best rating, TEF Gold, for our teaching. We are involved in cutting edge research, for example, around plastics and gender inequality. And we are taking a lead in addressing the problems of climate change. But we plan more, much more. The university has a vision that by 2030, we will be the top modern university in the UK and one of the top 100 universities globally. We plan to become carbon positive by 2030, to be one of the leading civic universities in the country, to open up the opportunities we offer to more young people who we know can benefit from them. And we plan to translate more of our academic expertise into practical results. We hope that as we realize our vision, we can make you more proud of your association with the university. So today, we hope, is just a change in the lifelong relationship we want to have with you. Please make use of our excellent alumni association and keep in touch as you continue your journey through life as you will be the future leaders, thinkers, creators, and innovators, we want to know what happens to you and keep in touch with you on your journey. The world desperately needs your talents, and when you are successful, please come back and visit us. Be part of our elite team, supporting future generations of Portsmouth students. Finally, I urge you to live by the values of your university in all that you do. Be responsible, be open, be ambitious, and never, never settle for second best. I congratulate you all on your, reward, on your awards, and I wish you every success for the future. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, 
In a moment, we will come to the formal part of the ceremony, and the Deputy Vice-Chancellor and the Academic Registrar will make the formal declarations, after which the students will process, congratulated by the Deputy Vice-Chancellor, Chris Chang, and myself, the Executive Dean of the Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences, Professor Anne Murphy. Before that, though, and while we're getting the students ready for their procession, we have prepared a short film of congratulations from your colleagues across the university. I want to say a huge well done and congratulations to you on completing your degree. Congratulations, you are graduates of the University of Portsmouth. What an amazing achievement. We are certainly very proud of you and your hard work and dedication, which has culminated in this moment. Please take time today to give yourself a pat on the back because I know it has been incredibly difficult. I really genuinely do. You should be rightfully proud of your achievements and the person that you have become. We are there to cheerlead you all the way to whatever you decide to do next. We also love to hear your stories. And maybe one day you will come back to the university and support future generations of University of Portsmouth students. You're amazing, you're brilliant, you've achieved, you are part of our university family, which extends globally. Be ambitious and bold and use your talents for the betterment of society and for the good of others. Thank you very much for entrusting those precious years of your life to the University of Portsmouth. Well done to all of you. Congratulations. Please take some time to celebrate. Congratulations to the class of 2021. Deputy Vice-Chancellor, as Academic Registrar, I confirm that those presented at this ceremony have successfully completed their studies and have satisfied all conditions and requirements of the university. By the authority of the university, I confirm that all those who are duly qualified are hereby admitted to the awards for which they are presented. Deputy Vice-Chancellor, I present to you the following successful candidates from the School of Area Studies, History, Politics and Literature. For the award of Bachelor of Honours in American Studies, Jack Emerson. Samuel Jones. James Logue. <laughs> Ella Tavender. <laughs> Selena Watson. <laughs> For the award of Bachelor of Arts in American Studies with History, Olivia Clayton. With first class honours, Chloe Doxey. Grace Cattenhorn. For the award of Bachelor of Arts in English Literature, Gentiana Alili.
with first class honours, Lainey Bish. <laughs> Sophie Bourne. <laughs> Emily Craft. <laughs> Francesca Day. Giovanna Edwards Campbell, <laughs> Lucy Grimbley, <laughs> Keely Holland, <laughs> Kira Lilly. Charlotte McGuire, <laughs> Stephanie McCaffrey, <laughs> Megan Moncrief, <laughs> Christian Raphael, <laughs> Serena Richards. Rochelle Walters, <laughs> Ellie Webb, <laughs> with first class honours, Sarah Beth Wellington, <laughs> with first class honours, Ryan Wilson. Ella Young, <laughs> for the award of Bachelor of Arts in English Literature with Media Studies, Ganesh Birdie, <laughs> Sabrina Fry, <laughs> for the award of Bachelor of Arts in History, Francesca Jones. Lewis Atkins. <laughs> Harry Bacar. <laughs> Grace Clark. <laughs> ben Cooper. With first class honours, Ellen Farr. <laughs> Joshua Field. <laughs> Alice Furby. <laughs> Jared Genido. Isabel Gollidge, <laughs> Luke Gorham, <laughs> Tom Grigory, <laughs> Lewis Hartman. With first class honours, Ashley Houghton. <laughs> Rebecca Jeffs. <laughs> Ella Nag. <laughs> Christina Leadham. Katie Lunn, <laughs> Jack Mail, <laughs> Darcy McKinley, <laughs> Lisa, 
Phoebe Moore Loisidis. <laughs> Harry Obgers. <laughs> Dylan Peacock. <laughs> Jacob Ranger. Edward Rook. <laughs> Oliver Rooney. <laughs> Robert Sainsbury. <laughs> With first class honours, Rosine Smith. Georgia Wilkinson. <laughs> Isabel Wynn. <laughs> For the award of Bachelor of Arts in History with Politics, Callum Chin. <laughs> Lauren Cooper. Daniel Healing. With first class honours, Jaina Hunt. Georgia Hutton. Drew Johnson. Alex Lewis. With first class honours, Charlotte Lewis. Nekma Mapa. Shannon Mamara Salter. Isabel North. <laughs> Anthony Wozitski. <laughs> For the award of Bachelor of Arts in History with Sociology, Catherine Frey. <laughs> Emily Jays. With first class honours, Charles Robinson. <laughs> For the award of Bachelor of Arts in International Development, Edward Allen. <laughs> With first class honours, Grace Blinkhorn. Zoe Coldridge. <laughs> Oliver Collingwood Hall. <laughs> With first class honours, Georgia Crisp Mills. <laughs> With first class honours, Georgia Fox. Chelsea Green. With first class honours, Sophie Hammond. With first class honours, Alia Harding. Mubin Hussein. Shamimi Mehdi.
with first class honours, James Lobbis. With first class honours, Edward Malloy. Stacey Marsh. Jodie Meeson. Takutswa Mukono. David Newman. Elijah Orofidia. With first class honours, Shanna Reed. Poppy Simpson. With first class honours, Victoria Wiltshire. For the award of Bachelor of Arts in International Development and Languages, with first class honours, Rebecca Hopkinson. With first class honours, Malaika Kamuri. With first class honours, Anna Sivaratnam. With first class honours, Rihanna Spearing. With first class honours, Emma Booker Milburn. Matthew Davis. Georgia Smith. For the award of Bachelor of Arts in International Relations, Abdullah Al Mutlaq. <laughs> Thomas Bannum. <laughs> With first class honours, Will Buckner. <laughs> Ishmael Chowdhury. Mijina Kufaj. <laughs> Joan Eklund. <laughs> Jessica Elphick. <laughs> With first class honours, Ewan Fallows. Caitlin Fisher. With first class honours, Maddie Freeman. Tia Hughes. Uma Joshi. J. Kirby Bott. <laughs> Ozat Krobu Idusi. <laughs> Jasmine Mohammed. <laughs> Guangzia Nangwang. With first class honours, Meg Picken. <laughs> Tom Si Jun Poon. <laughs> Tom
Guy Porteous. Adam Potter. Shay Wun Solaru. Aaron Spacey. Natalie Tekalova. Sophia Tonga. With first class honours, Jack Turner. Subina Uprati. With first class honours, Olivia Walker. Samantha Wright. For the award of Bachelor of Arts in International Relations and Languages, with first class honors, Dominika Ostrovska. For the award of International Relations and Politics, with first class honors, Shafi Ahmed. Uma Alkali. Michael Olsop. Nina Anthony. Greg Ashby. Rob Austin. Sam Bentley. <laughs> Jennifer Brumwell. <laughs> With first class honours, Ben Culliford. <laughs> With first class honours, Ryan Daly. Nina Igeli. With first class honors, Amina El Mansouri. Nuna Figueredo Marquez. Rebecca Franklin. Ben Goddard. With first class honors, Joseph Gowers. James Gambrell. Isabel Jimma. Asma Habiba. With first class honors, Peter Hatton. Louis Hayes. Callum Hewitson. With first class honors, Adam Idris. <laughs> Nat Jones. <laughs> With first class honors, Philippa Julians. <laughs> Sam
Sami Karim. Molly Knight. Abigail Linturn. Sophie Linturn. Sam Lister. James Loveday. Hamish McKenzie. Thomas Martins da Silva. Sifilele Masicani. Hannah Matthews. Isabel MacDonald. Thomas McNally. With first class honours, Patrick Meredith. Zach Messer. With first class honours, J.R. Neumeyer. James Noble. Edward Northeast. Adam O'Donnell. With first class honours, Farida Rahman. Joanna Ramon Bueno. With first class honours, Charles Ranson. George Rogers. Jack Selby. Rebecca Silman. <laughs> Eleanor Simmons. <laughs> Deborah Smith. <laughs> Dominic Southall. Toyin and Matthew Daniel. <laughs> Sophie Tate. <laughs> Isabella Tappenden. <laughs> Abby Taylor. Isabella Turpin. <laughs> With first class honours, Emma Vondra. <laughs> Ailish Wright. <laughs> For the award of Bachelor of Arts in International Relations with Languages, Aina Starzins. With first class honours, Bula Varatimi. Yeah. 
for the award of Bachelor of Arts in Politics, Ross Bennett. Alan Dowie. Joseph Dunbar. Robin Gallagher. Samuel Goring. With first class honours, Scott Hazelwood. <laughs> Niall Hendrick. <laughs> Oliver Lee. <laughs> Catherine Malloy. Chukwu Emekan Lewedim. With first class honours, Caitlin Pettit. <laughs> Francis Radcliffe. <laughs> George Sharp. Mary Shepherd, <laughs> Will Slater, <laughs> James Vivian, <laughs> for the award of Master of Arts in International Relations, with distinction, Essa Badiji. Eugenia Boteng. <laughs> With distinction, Alice Chatband. <laughs> With distinction, Sara Melchiades. Jessica of Borley. <laughs> Karishma Kaisrani. <laughs> Michael Sullivan. <laughs> Louise Tree. For the award of Master of Arts in Naval History, Catherine Dace. <laughs> Katie Davis Gregory. <laughs> Lawrence Lingham. <laughs> Cameron Meaton. Daniel Moulton. <laughs> Edward Stout. <laughs> Andrew Venn. <laughs> For the award of Master of Arts in Victorian Gothic, History, Literature and Culture, Kayleigh Berry. For the award of Master of Public Administration in Public Administration, Mary Crockett. It's Marge. Marge Crockett.
with distinction, Jeremy Jones. With distinction, Beth Stewart. For the award of Master of Research in Literary Studies, Charlotte Armstrong. Liam Brammel. With distinction, Andrew Buller. With distinction, Hannah Coombs. Jade Lynch. For the award of Master of Research in Security Studies, with distinction in Security Studies, Billy Whitehair. For the award of Master of Science in International Development Studies, Ela Antoshevich. For the award of Doctor of Philosophy with the topic Interrogating the Future, Imagining War in an Age of Change, 1870 to 1914, David Bangert. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy in the topic Transgressively Gendered Space in the Pursuit of Self-Fulfillment, Knowledge and Maintaining Identity, Karima Bentoumi. Doctor of Philosophy in the topic, The Sons of Neptune and of Mars, Organizational Identity and Mission in the Royal Marines, 1827 till 1927, John Bolt. <laughs> Deputy Vice-Chancellor, this concludes the presentation of candidates from the School of Area Studies, History, Politics and Literature, and for today's ceremony. Thank you. I now present to you Gerard Neumeyer, to respond to the university on behalf of the graduates. Deputy Vice Chancellor, honored guests, fellow graduates, and good people here today. Our university years are some of the most challenging yet rewarding of our lives. And this has never rung truer as we've all had to adapt to survive and thrive. We persevered with the help of our lecturers, the university, and its support services. What's more is we adapted to an ever-changing situation and achieved our degrees. We found new ways of working and collaborating with each other that deepened our understanding of community through new ways of socializing and staying connected. This adaptability on multiple fronts is a strength we can rely on for years to come, and our resilience in continuing on in our work and education is one of the greatest employable strengths we have for our CVs. We are all sitting here today having faced difficult times, and I believe that makes us all stronger, ready to face the challenges of the future. Now, although we may not have had our traditional education, we adapted by learning through countless Zoom lectures and seminars, numerous e-books, watching pre-recorded lectures while eating breakfast, and many other forms of online engagement and learning. And it is this, there is, can be no doubt that we have earned our degrees. What's more is we have gained three key employable traits. Perseverance, for when the going gets tough, adaptability to changes in our environment, 
and resilience to not only manage, but to overcome and thrive when faced with challenge. And all of this was made possible with the help of the university, its faculty, and its support services. And with them, we have defined the narrative that we are one of the most resilient, adaptable, and capable graduate classes for years to come. Thank you. Thank you. It is at this point in the ceremony that we would normally hear from the Chancellor, Karen Blackett, who unfortunately is not able to be with us today. She never likes to miss a graduation ceremony, so let's hear a specially recorded message from Karen. Congratulations to all of you. This is an immensely proud day for you, your friends and your family. You should be incredibly proud, as I am proud of sharing this day with you as Chancellor of the University of Portsmouth. Now, I have been where you were 29 years ago, and although that was a long time ago, I still remember how emotional the day is. I remember the immense sense of pride and joy on my mother and my late father's faces as my name was announced and I was called up. You should feel incredibly proud. Now myself and my sister were the first generation in my family to go to university and this may be true for some of you today. You are pioneers. Your time at the university will go on to become a big part of who you are and what you go on to achieve. You will leave this ceremony today at least a foot taller than when you first arrived at the university. I hope your time at the university has helped you to unlock your true potential and also, and really importantly, unlock your self-belief as it did for me. I really want you to try and remember the friends that you're sitting next to and who are around you that you have made at the university as these are your cheerleaders. Please also remember the lessons that you have been taught and that you have learnt during your time at the university. These will act as your compass. Now, you leave the university today under very different circumstances to what all of us have expected, into a world that seems increasingly uncertain. A world of work that has changed forever. I really don't want you to worry. What you have to do is trust your head your hearts, and then trust your gut. You will need to be strong and resilient. You are equipped to deal with this uncertainty and any future change. You've got this. Most importantly, I want you to find your purpose and I want you to find your happiness. Now, this may not seem immediate right now because of the euphoria of graduating today during the ceremony, but you will need to find it. And when you do, grab hold of it with both hands as it will guide you through life. You have the potential to make the world a much, much happier place. I wish you Godspeed and I wish you good luck. I wish you all the luck in the world in fulfilling a really joyful and happy life. Now, go out, change the world, and congratulations on being a graduate of the University of Portsmouth. I want to add my congratulations to all of you who have graduated and also to all those who supported the graduates while they studied at the university. I now declare this congregation closed Please be upstanding for the academic procession.